This shirt was $4. But I bought this in Hawaii in like technically there in fall, in winter. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney if you're new here. If you're not new here, thank you for returning. Hello, how are you? What's your day like? I don't know. I'm just gonna start talking about this because I have a couple things to say and I'm gonna try not to rant too much. So if you didn't know, Hourglass comes out with a limited edition palette, I'm pretty sure every year. I don't know how long that they've been doing it for, but it's been a minute. So these are limited edition. They are kind of coveted items. I feel like if you collect makeup, it's something that people are really drawn towards and they kind of uh, value in a sense. I myself have not gotten any other ones except for the trio, the ambient lighting palette that they did. I don't even know how old that is, but I don't want to think about it. The one that I'm talking about is this one right here. It's the little, I don't know. I think this is literally just called the ambient lighting palette. Yeah. So it had the dim light, incandescent light, and radiant light. So I've had this for a very long time, probably too long, but I don't really care. They're really nice powders and they still perform perfectly. You, there's no, I haven't hit pan on any of them. Anyway, I am also gonna try to not blind you with the reflectiveness of these products. So because everything is so reflective and kind of mirrored, I don't like that it gets dirty easily and that like your fingerprints and stuff get on it. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal to me. It's not like, you know, if the products perform really well and they're like how I like them to be. If they're like what usual hourglass products are like, I feel like I'm really gonna love it. So. So this is the unicarton that it comes in. Mine was a little bent, which was kind of upsetting because this palette is so expensive, uh, but it did come in the mail, so these things happen. I, I think it's interesting. This is like right side up here, and then to see the back, you don't flip it around, you like flip it this way. So you go from looking at it here to looking at it here. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that matters. Honestly, before I get into anything else, I just need to talk about the price. This palette is so expensive. This palette is $80. Eight, zero. I think, I have a lot of feelings on this. <laughs> I think $80 is insane. That is a lot of money. But at the same time, Hourglass products are beautiful. They are so seamless and soft and well-pressed and just have such a longevity to them that I think if you think $80 is not a lot and you can see this being like a holy grail product, I think definitely give it a go. I'm gonna try it today for the first time on my face. I haven't even touched it or swatched it, so I'm pretty excited to get like my first impressions and kind of see how it all lays on top of my face big up today. I will of course be using it in future times and maybe future videos, but we'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll return it, I don't know. I don't want to though because I myself like to collect makeup in the sense that the things I collect, I will use up all the way if I can. So I'll just keep things to like collect dust. I will also note that I got this item on sale. It was during the, mm, uh, I don't know what that sale was even called. It was with Sephora obviously, and it was like the 20% off, 10% off, 15% off. I don't know. But I actually, uh, my mom is a rouge and I am neck. So I asked her to buy it through her account. And so I paid personally $64. So I used her 20% discount and I purchased it for $64, which is still expensive. But uh, sometimes I just, mm, I don't know. Is it gonna be worth it? We'll see. This is what it looks like here. It's got that beautiful mirrored top. God, it's pretty. It has a good weight to it. It's not super heavy. Uh, and then the products inside are stunning. So you have your two setting powders up here, your highlight, and then your two blushes and a bronzer, I believe. And they are, these pans are kind of small. I'm not gonna lie, when I first opened it and saw the pans, I was like, really? It's kind of small. Another reason that I'm excited about this Hourglass product is I feel like Hourglass as a company does the perfect amount of launches. To be fair, it's still pretty often. 
I don't know. I, I might just have like a skewed perspective on that. Um, but and maybe it's just because recently so many companies have released so many products and it's just overwhelming. But with Hourglass, I feel like they're just such a high-end luxury brand that performs. I mean, I don't think I've ever had something from them that I didn't like. Ooh, that is not true. That is so not true. The Immaculate, no. The Hourglass Liquid Vanish Foundation, the one that said that you didn't need a primer with it, total fail, total flop for me. Might have just been my skin type though, so it's not a big deal. I'm not really like butthurt about it. It could have worked for you, a million other people, I don't know, but I just, I don't see a lot of people talking about that still. So that's another reason that I'm like, ooh, it's expensive. This is a spendy brand. I'm gonna stop rambling because I wanna say a couple things that is actually listed. Is actually listed? So on the package, it even has directions. So it says, ambient lighting edit is fragile. Please handle with care. Oh, okay, those type of directions. Ambient lighting edit ghost. That's the official palette. Did I say that earlier? I don't know. It's also important that they include all of the ingredients on the back. I always appreciate that a lot. They are a cruelty-free brand, which is great. It does also have a 12-month shelf life. It has a little pop, the 12 months in it. And like I said before, I've had my other Hourglass palette for a long time. I don't know. I People feel very polarized by that. They either want to throw it away immediately as soon as the whatever months is done, or they keep it around forever and they're just like, well, if something happens, something happens. So real quickly, I just wanna read some things that Sephora actually has on their app about the product. It says a palette featuring a 100% vegan blush and bronzer in six shades for a glowing complexion. Cool for vegans and in general. Ingredient call outs, this product is also vegan, cruelty free, and gluten free. What else you need to know? This travel friendly palette is everything you need to finish, brighten, contour, and highlight your skin. Featuring three exclusive, exclusive shades. <laughs> Featuring three exclusive shades of ambient lighting bronzer, ambient lighting blush, and ambient strobe lighting blush. This palette is formulated with photoluminescent technology to capture, diffuse, and soften surrounding light for skin that appears softer, younger, and lit from within. So yeah, it does say here that it has the powders and dim light, diffuse light, strobe lighting powder and iridescent strobe light. And then the blushes are iridescent rose, ambient lighting blush and sublime flush. And then the lighting bronzer is in eternal bronze light. That's a lot of ambient and lighting and all of that in one description. So Whew. there's no smell. I cannot detect any type of scent at all none none at all i know a lot of people have commented on this packaging around the edges this like plastic see-through bit people have said that kind of cheapens it it makes it look you know not as luxury that to me is like eh, i can i can see that i totally get where everyone's coming from but to me if this looks like this and these like perform excellently and change my life that's dramatic but if they perform great then i this doesn't it doesn't matter before i go on here is a little bit of a closer look at the products the mirror in it is also crystal clear it is nice beautiful i this would be perfect for travel for me that's another reason why i did buy it and kind of spend that money on it okay enough 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 i'm gonna start using this because I can't wait. I'm very excited. Okay, so on my face already, I have foundation. I used the CYO foundation in, I believe it's 104? 103. And I don't know, now I, I'm using like a freaking $7 foundation with an $80 palette and that's just, that's where I'm at. I am having a skin reaction to something and I don't know if, I think it's a skincare or maybe like a rose hip oil that I tried, but I'm having some breakouts that I don't normally have, so I do have a little bit of shape tape on, and I set my face with the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder in Translucent Light. So that's what I have on my face, my eyes are done, my eyebrows are on. I'm gonna go in with the bronzer first. So that's this shade down here. That's the, what is it, what is it called? Eternal Bronze Light, and on the back of the packaging, it lists the numbers and the shades and all that. So if that's something you also wanted to know, it's on the back as well, which is a nice touch. 
Sometimes they don't do that. I don't know. I'm gonna take a clean brush. This is just a clean angled brush from Glamour Dolls and it looks rough, but do I wanna touch this first? Yeah, it's smooth. Feels exactly like what I would think that it would feel like. Yeah, really soft, easily just like. <laughs> it just feels like silky. I wanna see what this blush looks like. And they're kind of baked. So like they have that marbly kind of look on them in the palette, but like it's just so soft, which I like bronzers and blushes to be a little softer currently now when I do my makeup. Uh, just because you can build them up or leave them really light and have that the the glow from within thing that they said in their little description it, I have been leaning more towards that lately Don't know if it's the weather don't know if it's my mood Who cares? I barely touched that too. So I really feel like you can kick it up a notch But okay, so going with that bronzer tap into it and be kind of light So it's very subtle in a good way. You know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna take a bit more of that on my brush and I'm not gonna tap it off. I'm gonna see what happens. Still deposits really nicely. At first I was concerned that like this wouldn't be, this would be too warm or too orange on me. But honestly, it's kind of doing like a contour and bronze at the same time situation. Wow. I go up on my forehead like I usually do and around the temples. This looks not that blended though. Actually, I don't know, on camera it looks really blotchy. Is it? Maybe I put too much on. Oops. Or maybe it's because I looked like an absolute vampire before with nothing on my face. I really don't like how much foundation and concealers on my face today. I don't know why I decided to go in with all of that. This is not a dense brush at all. It's very fluffy. It's very just kind of airy. So keep that in mind. Put some on the nose. Nice. Let me see. I'm gonna take a little bit of a denser brush. I'm gonna take this Marc Jacobs brush. It's called the blush brush. It's a little denser just to see how that performs with a different brush. To kind of buff it a little bit more instead of just lightly putting it on. Right here, it doesn't look that blended on camera, but in real life, it does. It looks very soft. So maybe it's just a lighting because when I look straight on, you see that kind of right here, but then when you look Trickery. Trickery is happening. This bronzer is nice. I'm gonna blend it a little bit more. See how it does. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a blush now. So the other brush that I use for blush is currently dirty and I use this brush for like translucent setting powder and I kind of tapped it off a little bit. So I'm just gonna use this brush. It's not 100% clean but it's clean enough for me right now. I don't know which one I wanna use. So they're both kind of glowy, but this one over here is a little more like baby pink, like baby doll pink than I thought it was gonna be. And then this one is kind of that like rosy glowy one. Mm, I'm gonna go with the rosy one. So I'm just gonna tap into it. I'm scared. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's a cute, oh it has, a, do you see that sheen to it, kind of glow? That's nice, it makes me feel like I don't want to wear a highlighter. I'm just going to put it on the apples and kind of sand it back, a little on the forehead. This is very pretty. This is like, it kind of makes me think like more of a natural flush type of shade. And I'm going to put a little on my nose, because I like that look, I think it's cute. I'm gonna mix the blush and the bronzer and put it on my forehead just to add a little bit more color. This blush is very glowy. It almost has like a blue shift to it. I don't know if that's transferring on the camera, but that's what I'm kind of seeing. I don't know, could you be me? So I think this one is the like highlight shade in it, even though, even though like the other powders are kind of glowy. I think this one's, I think it's kind of
kind of like their metallic blush that they did or their metallic highlights I'm not sure but I'm gonna use this as a highlight and see what happens so I'm just gonna take my real technique setting brush actually I'm gonna feel this real quick it looks pink and that scares me that's like very chill did I just touch the wrong one? Which one's which? One, two, three, four. Is four the bronzer? Yeah. So, four. One, two, three. <laughs> Alright, I think I just went in with the wrong powder. I don't know what's happening. Alright. So, to recap, this one. Real Technique Setting Brush. Well, it's definitely glowy, but it's so soft. Which... Honestly, I like better than most highlights that I have right now. I don't know why, I've kind of, I've gotten in like a mood of not really liking really intense highlights currently. Especially on my cheeks. I love a good nose highlight, but on my cheeks I'm not crazy about like the beaming highlights on my cheeks right now. Don't know why. So that is very soft, very like literally glow from within. There's no lines, there's no, doesn't look like when I'm looking straight ahead, I don't see that line. I don't know, I mean, tell me if you can see any type of like non-blended parts. It's like a pinky tone, I think. Maybe that's the blush mixing in with it. These go very well together, so that's plus. I am gonna highlight, I'm gonna take that same shade, I'm gonna highlight down the bridge of my nose and on the tip of my nose. And it is kinda pink, I think, I think. Yeah, that's pink, but not like, God, these are so soft. These really like very natural makeup. I use that word loosely. Oh yeah, I like that. See, it's not, it's not overdone. It's not really obnoxious. It's just like I look kind of healthy or something. I don't know. Okay, I want to try one of these setting powders underneath my eye. And I think I'm going to go for the shade in the middle, this one right here because I just want to see how it performs underneath my eyeballs. Pick up a little bit of it and go really lightly. Not really gonna put a lot of it on. It looks smooth. I'm gonna put a little on my chin, why not? Maybe a little on my forehead. I don't know if this is making that big of a difference, I think what I would see is how well it does later on and if I really put more of it on. I just kind of wanted to put it on my face. There's really no explanation to that. All right, that is blending pretty pretty well. Uh, I think trying this with different face products and different foundation um, is obviously gonna be a little more telling other than just the first time trying it uh, today. But yeah, I don't hate it. I put on a little lip liner, the uh, ColourPop BFF. I feel very blushy right now. In real life, it does not look as intense as it does on this camera. I don't know why, couldn't tell you. But it does look very soft and I do have a bit of a glow. My eye, my uh, eyebrow highlight is pretty glowy right now so I feel like it kind of all blends together. But yeah, it's pretty and it just does have that softness to it. All right, here's something else that I really, really want to mention and stress. So here we have a palette that's limited edition came out for the holidays, people want it, people want to talk about it, people want to grab it while they can type of thing, and there is only one version. Hear me out. So I am white. I am very fair. I get very pale. This palette suits my skin. There are so many other skin tones other than literally what's sitting right here, right now. So many, so, so many. So for a company to come out with a palette that's beautiful and that's this coveted thing and you know, this iconic moment and for just one version to come out, come on. To me, we're better than this. Hourglass, be better than this. I love these products and they're so pretty and it's so nice and maybe this is gonna be my new favorite thing that I put on my face every day, but what about everyone else? I don't know, it's not like anyone from Hourglass is ever gonna watch this, but 
I just think that it's something important to note because not everyone can use this palette and it's not suitable for all skin tones. So why would you not release like one for fair light, medium tan, deep rich? I know they have the resources. It's hourglass for Pete's sake. All right, I don't wanna rant about that for too long because I know it's not my place to come out and make a statement and because I am white, there's privilege. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that me crying and yelling about things is gonna solve something, but I think as someone who is very fair, I need to mention this. We have to talk about it. I don't wanna to get too political because I feel like, you know, some people are gonna be like, it's just makeup, calm down. You're right, it is just makeup, but if it's just makeup, why not make a few versions? Why not? Literally, why? That's just me. And I know I'm not the only one, so. That's what I have to say on that. I think that's the only con other than the packaging getting really dirty. So like you have something really serious that I think is important to know and then like the packaging gets dirty, so. All right, that is pretty much all I have to say about this right now. If I forgot anything or if I want to kind of note how this lasted on my face for the rest of the day, I will put that in the description box down below. It looks pretty and it feels nice. Uh, but it, you know, it, this is a first impression. I'm gonna try it multiple times because I did spend the money on it. I do wanna try it with other foundations or just with like a powder and then on my face, kind of less less layers, less makeup on my face to see how it kind of wears, if it creases, you know, whatever. My makeup does crease, it has creased uh, since I started filming just in general. So that happens. But yeah, it seems very soft and effortless and that's kind of what I've been liking a lot lately. So we shall see if this palette holds up. Thank you all so much for watching today. If you have any comments or wanna say anything, please leave a comment down below. I would love to talk to you guys about this and just kind of chat, whatever. Please like this video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up for me. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It does help me out. That's all I really think I need to say. Maybe, I might be forgetting something. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.